This week in Sharia Talmud, we learned Kedushin Daf 4a. And we had a third drush. It says, Gufa. The Pasik said, Vyotzechinum, which means the slave girl goes there for free. Vein Kesef, and she doesn't have to pay, so that's extra. A third drush. What is the possibility? Yotzechinum, that's talking about Yemei Bagrus. That she goes out when she is 12 and a half, depending on age. Vein Kesef, Elimana Aros, that's talking about Simanim. She goes out when she becomes a Naara, and she has Simanim. She sees, starts to see the signs of womanhood. At that point, she goes out. The Gemara comes along and has a kash on that drush, and it says, Likto of Rachman and Aru is for low boy bagrus. If I know that the earlier stage, when she starts to see simanim of womanhood, that she goes out, so surely she goes out at the later stage, when she's 12 and a half, because it usually happens before. So just teach one or the other. The Amar Rabbah comes along, Rabbah, it says, Ba Zevelim This one comes to teach on that one. We're going to explain what that means with a dugma, with an example. The Gemara brings an example. It doesn't explain the kasha at the point, but from the example, he understood what the kasha was. The example is, Toshev Vesachir. What about a male slave? We have two types of male slave. One that's sold for six years, at the end of six years he goes out, and one that's sold for 49 years. He decides to stay by his master because he has a wife and children there, and he wants to stay. He goes out after 49 years when the oval comes. The verse says both when it's talking about whether these types of slaves can eat truma, the special food that a Kohen eats. It's kadosh, for holy, it's holy. So can these kind of slaves eat truma? The answer is no, neither of them. So the Gemara says, the Tanya Toshev, Zekinu Yekinyan Olam, Basakir, Zekinin Kinim Shanim. The Bryce says that the word Toshav is coming to tell you that a 49 slave cannot, a 49 year slave cannot eat. Basakir, that's coming to tell you that a 6 year slave cannot eat. Comes along the Bryce that says, Yamar Toshev, Lo Yamar Sakir. Just say that the 49-year-old slave cannot eat, and surely I'll know the 7-year-old slave can eat, because if someone who lives by somebody for 49 years, he can't eat his food, he has to eat his own food. So surely somebody who's only by somebody else by 7 years, surely he cannot eat that special kind of a food. So each one will know the other. Comes along the Gemara and says, no, I can't do that. Because if I just would have wrote the word Toshev, it would have made a mistake. I don't know what kind of slave that's referring to. And it's coming to me telling me that it can't eat. Okay, which one is it? Must be the smaller Kiddush. It must be that the seven-year slave he can't eat. But surely the 49-year slave can eat. Comes along the Gemara and says, Basakher v'lamar al-Toshev. In other words, you teach both. You don't know what the thing is. It's not clear. It's not written before. It just says Toshev. You don't know what kind of slave that is. So I have to write both. Because why? I have to write both a Toshev and a Sakhir to tell me that both of them are not canny. In other words, they're stacked on top of each other. If you only had one, you would have thought the smaller Kiddush, the least novel idea. You want to know the big Kiddush. Rava brought this as an example as a difficulty to Ardiv, Argamar. Argamar is the same thing. You have a Nar and a Vabagris. If I just would have wrote one, Yotzik Hinem, and I wouldn't have the Kiddush of Ein Kesef, well, I would think, who goes out for free? The older girl, because the older girl is the least Kiddush. In other words, you a person bought a slave. When did she go out? This happens to be the Kiddush of the Pasuk. This is telling us that this girl, when she reaches a certain age, she goes out. But what's the Kiddush? The Kiddush has to be the smaller Kiddush. Normally, slaves don't go out. Must be she goes out at the older age, and that's what I would think. Baze comes along. Baze comes along this one, Velimon Azeh, and tells me on that one. I need both. I can't write just one. And I brought an example of that from the Bryce that talks about male slaves. The same kind of idea. Baze, Velimon Azeh. They're stacking on top of each other. I need both. Limuts comes along and by and says, "What are you talking about? It's not comparable. You can't learn from the male slave Brisa to our case to our Russia. Why? Because he says Tregufaninhu. One second. You can have two types of slaves. You can have a six-year slave. At the same time, you can have a forty-nine-year-old slave." So in such a case, even if I was teached both Mefarish, so then I would still be able to answer, in Nochinami I taught both. But I would be able to answer, Da'ase Baka Vachomer, Tarek Vachasa Vilekra. In other words, sometimes it really is, even though we like it's only stylistic, we don't like to say such a thing, but sometimes we wrote b- both Chedushim. In other words, if I would have wrote it Mefarish, and I would have said, hey, I can learn from a Kav Homer, well then I could have answered you, yes. But sometimes we write them both. Because maybe you'll make a st- mistake in a Kav Homer, I wrote them both. But you couldn't do that by Bagrus and Na'aros. In other words, if you wrote Na'ara, which is the younger age that she goes out, if you wrote them Mefarish, you'll never have a case of Bagrus, because there's only one girl here. You can't write both, and you can't come along and give the tarots if it was Mefarish, the Milsa, the Asif, the Kabbalah, the Tarot, the Kasev, the Akra. 
It appears that the principle ba zev limon azed, when it's written not meforish, that you have to stack them on top of each other, that only apply in the case where it is meforish, where you could answer, well, I wrote them anyway because I needed to write them and I didn't want you to make a mistake. Only when you can use that rule can you use the other rule. But in our case, you'll never have a case if you write nara meforish. You'll never have the case of Bargas, because if she goes out at 12, surely she's already out at 12 and a half. And therefore, Abaya has to come along and give a fourth drusha. It's coming to tell you that not only does it Nara go out, but also Elonis. Even a woman who never has Simanim Nara, in other words, she is a woman who's sick, she is a woman that cannot have children and never sees the Simanim, the signs of womanhood, even that woman goes out. You would add Avamina, this is what it said Nara, so it only would have said Nara, so you have to have Simanim Nara. That's when the girl goes out. But if she would never have Simanim Nara, so then she would be stuck there forever. Kamash Malan, the Chinish of the Pasik and Kesef, they tell you that even a Yilanis goes out without Simanim. Comes along the Gemara and doesn't like that Limud Abaya Matkif Le Mar Baravashi Velav Kavachomer. Where does the Kavachomer that Limud? I don't need to learn it from the pasuk. It says Masimanim Shein Motzim Rishusa Av Motzim Rishusa Adon. What that the Simanim of Naaros of womanhood does not take her out from the Maisia day of her father that she still has to give her work to her father Motzim Rishusa Adon. But it does take her away from the Adon. Bagrus, but Bagrus, which does take her out of the reshus of her father. In other words, once she becomes a full-fledged woman, she, she no longer has to give her Maisiyadeya to her father. Surely it should take her away of her Adon. And therefore, I don't need to know the Ilanas, because all we're trying to say is the Ilanas ain't no Hanami, she doesn't have Simani Naros, but she does have Bagrus. We wait to see whether she's reached womanhood. It takes to age 20 to know that, but she'll go out. It's Peshitta, I know it's from a Kalvachoma, and you know the Pasuk can tell me to that. Comes along, Mar Baravashi. He doesn't say that she goes out. Not that that's not the Kiddush of the Pasik. The Kiddush of the Pasik is that the Zavina of Ilanis is a Zavina. In other words, if you sold this girl as the Ilanis, so she still will be a Zavina and you won't have to return the money, Lima Freya. That's according to Tosfos. Psychedak mean of the Asi Simanim the Aros, Havi Zavina, Velo Asi Simanim the Aros, Lo Havi Zavina. You would have thought that if she sees the Simana of Ilanis, so then the Zavina is a Zavina. But if not, the sale was never a sale. And you have to give back all the money, Lima Freya, retroactively. Kamash Malan, Kamash Malan Yotzechinim, it says that she goes out for free to teach you, no, the sale really was a sale. Even if later you find out that she was a Ilonis. Comes along the Gemara and says, wait a second, why do you have to come up to that answer? You, just before, in the Gemara, just before we answered, you can have a Kava Chomer, and you can answer that there's a Kava Chomer. So what if you have a Kava Chomer? You have a principle. The principle is, Mils Adasi B'Kava Chomer, Tirk V'Kati V'Lakra. Even when you have a Kava Chomer, sometimes you write out both sides. Comes along the Gemara and answers and says, no. Hani Mila Hekadelek L'Shinuya. That's where you don't have any other answer. Vahekadelek L'Shinuya Mashninan. When you have a better answer, a real answer, we just gave a real answer. We wanted to say that it's referring to that this is the Venus of Venus, the sales of sale. We don't want to answer stylistically. And Okanami, sometimes we answer stylistically to say that we spelled out the Kavachomer, but we don't like to say that. That's only we have no other answer. But here we have a different answer, and therefore we prefer the different answer. Now there's an interesting rich find this. He explains the original Kasha says Liktu Rachman and Naarus, Velo by Bagrus. Just write Naarus, Velo by Bagrus. What was referring to? It was referring to Yotzi Kinam and Kesif. The question is, well, what did we mean by that? So we see according to Rava, the Ritva points out, that what we meant by that, we didn't mean write Meforish Liktav Rachman and Aros, we meant write the way it is written, write Yotzeh Chinam, Vein Kesev, and be able to figure out both of those things. Why? How do we know that's Peshat and Rava? He brought an example of a Tosha of Shachir. There was also not written Meforish. It didn't tell you what. It was just written Tosha. It was ambiguous. And you have ambiguous language where you can plug in the pieces. If you have two that will fit with Kavakoma, and the Kavakoma can and exist like Tosha Vesaka because they both exist, exist at the same time so then you can write ambiguously that was Rava comes along the Ritva and it says yeah now when Abaya comes along and asks Kasha me dame hasim trei at that point he switched he rejected this Limud he rejected that you can learn from a Tosha Vesaka therefore the Ritva wants to redefine the original Kasha according to Abaya when it said Liktov Rachman and Aris for low boy Bagrus it meant Mefarish, really write the word Na'arus. Why is the Pasuk speaking in code words? Speak out Mefarish what it means. And that's Peshat in the Kasha 
according to Abaya. 